Well, I just want to put out a brief video. Like, uh, let me just put out this as a what if situation. If I personally got Ebola or something, what would I do? And there was no medical equipment involved. Yeah, I would take the liposomal vitamin C. I would take astragalus root. I would take um, uh, high sop herb. I would take lots of selenium. Uh, I would even take the baking soda, um, H2O2, droplets, food grade in the water. Um, I'm missing some things. Uh, coconut oil, oil of oregano. Um, and I also take the colloidal silver. And I know I got people on the, on the internet telling me it's a cure, and it's because the DOD says it's a cure. They don't actually say it's a cure. They 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 kind of say it in another way. But do what the hell you want. I just know that uh, with CS, it's not. It's been good. I, I'm an advocate of it. I take it pretty much every day, but. Uh, I'm just telling you that, you know, if that was a cure, it would have been wiping out the common cold years ago. Uh, what I would do personally, and I'm not telling you you should do this, because I don't want to be accused of selling this stuff, because I don't really have any financial connection to this this at all. I got a few of these uh, spooky generators, and uh, I would I didn't even trust, you know, how accurate they could be, because they were so low priced. There was like um, one fourteen ninety five plus shipping, and I just can't believe how reliable and accurate they are. I run them all the time. I checked them with a liter uh, frequency counter, LDC A22 frequency counter I picked up that was calibrated. I also checked them with an old analog out, uh, uh, oscilloscope that was calibrated for the waveforms. And they're true to the design. I mean, I don't know how the heck these... I mean, this, this place is... Pre these people that are selling this stuff, this spooky two rife, whatever it is, are... Um, pretty much practically non-profit i don't know if they're chartered that way but they're not making a lot of money on this stuff that's for sure and what i would do is in the under the extra on this program and i went through i'll just point to links on other videos and stuff i would use they have frequencies in here that allegedly allegedly address ebola i don't know how strong they are but the thing is with this program you can really go to town you can use um you know the uh, H bomb wave, which is this. It's the H, actually the H bomb square wave, which is this down here. You can see this down here. That's another thing you can use, or you can use um, uh, follow out one inverse sync with contact mode, and use a, an eleventh harmonic. Put an eleven here, and you know just <laughs> crank it all the way up. And use a contact mode. Actually, I, I'll tell you the truth. I've used the contact mode at 20 volts without even me personally. They don't recommend doing this without checking off reduce amplitude amplitude below 10 kilohertz. I personally use the contact mode way the hell up there. <laughs> That's what I did. I'm not telling you to do that. Normally, you want to do this reduce amplitude below 10 kilohertz. Because you can feel a shock, but I felt not an unpleasant shock. It was more like a, a buzz. So they got the frequencies in here, and um, they are 169, 234, 239, 244, 479, 957, 1195, 1914, uh, 38, ooh, I can't read that. Looks like 3828 and 1828. So they're in there, and I don't know, I don't know how well they've been tested because a lot of these lists. Now I'm going to actually state something even about some of these frequencies because there's a lot of confusion about the original right frequencies. Like for instance, you got the original right frequencies, and they're much different from what you'll see on a consolidated frequency list. Um, the original right frequencies use sine waves, and but you know I'm not saying they don't work. You know, hold the Clark, for instance. They got the uh, hold the Clark frequencies. Uh, she did something else. She used all positive offset, but she tested them. They work. The consolidated frequency list, as a matter of fact, that list here. Um, now, within that list, they have a lot of the John Crane frequencies. But I'm going to tell you this: the first, and you know, the, I'm going to I'm going to state this. They say, you know, it's a, it's a war of words, I guess. Um, I just want to explain this. Uh, Royal Rife used radio waves um, to uh, 
cured the cancer, whatever. He actually did do that back then. Nobody knows. Well, I think they do know pretty much what he did today, but you can't use radio waves. you got to use something else. But um, they were running into problems in the 50s about with the radio waves and the Federal Communications, uh, you know, FCC. You couldn't be broadcasting radio waves. So, uh, And also, they, they were looking to do something that would be more accepted by the standard of medical establishment. Uh, John Crane, in 1958, came out with the first pad-type Rife machine. And Royal Rife did assist John Crane in coming up with these frequencies. So they look a lot different from the original Rife frequencies. They're not as effective, but they not to say they don't work or not at all. But that's another thing. Is it a cure-cure? I don't know. No, no, it, it's not. It's not. But as far as... Um, you know this extra. I don't know where this. I don't know who developed these frequencies, but I want to tell you that. Uh, I want to tell you that. The. Um, thing with um, with these frequencies is that. I'm trying to type this in here. Excuse me, but it's not seeming to type. E B O, L. I must be on. Uh, you know, I see what the problem is. It got onto a num lock. But anyway, the problem, the thing is with the uh, frequencies is that um, I don't know who put the research out for the Ebola frequencies. I don't know at all. But if it was me, if it was me, I would definitely try these in an emergency situation. And they might work. They might work. I would use the contact mode and both the contact mode and the remote mode. That's what I would do. I would take the vitamin C liposomal, the colloidal silver. And I'm talking about this is all just first aid, uh, emergency first aid. There's nothing you can do about it, you know, last-ditch effort. But I'd be, I would think I got a lot of faith in this. Um, what do you call it? Hold on a second. I have a lot of faith in this uh, technology, and it may work. It may work. Here it is. So you got Ebola hemorrhagic fever and Ebola virus. Now, the other thing is I'd be taking a lot of vitamin C, too, because it repairs damage. But in this program, now, I'm not selling it. I'm telling you right now, I am not selling this stuff. I don't have nothing to do with these people at all. I'm just a bigger believer in it. I'm a big fan of it. They also have colloidal silver frequencies, <laughs> believe it or not. They have... Colloidal silver. Let's see. Let's say silver. Silver, silver, silver. And let's go look at. We have in silver. See, colloidal silver and gold. Colloidal silver. Colloidal silver octal. They got it all in here. I don't know how strong that is going to be, but supposedly those frequencies go to every single DNA in your body if you set it by remote. So you could set. Colloidal silver scalar here, and on one generator, say on remote, and do another generator with contact mode, and you can use the um, Ebola virus frequencies. I personally, if I was going to use this, I would try two methods. I would use contact method. I would change it. I would put it up to 20 volts. Um, I'd use this with the inverse sync um, and the 11th harmonic. And the second way I would do it is I would change this to a 78% and get rid of the in to get rid of that part, the 11th harmonic. And I would use with the inverse sync the 100% positive offset on the one and the minus. 100% positive offset on the other and I'd be going at with contact not just remote and I'd be running that colloidal silver scaler all the time plus the essential oils like you could run uh, thieves oil all on this and um, plus take the actual physical stuff so that's what I would do but I know there's a lot of people arguing with me about uh, colloidal silver being a cure I gotta tell you this, 
if colloidal silver was a cure, we'd already be through with the common cold a long time ago, and there wouldn't be millions of people dying of HIV AIDS in Africa. Um, also want to state that the viral load of Ebola is in the billions. The stuff people are dying of with HIV AIDS in Africa, or just let's call it HIV versus AIDS, where the confusion comes in, is between like roughly on average 50,000 to 100,000 versus billions. It doesn't even work on that, nano silver. It doesn't even work on that. So I know people are going to scream at me and say, oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you this. You, what you got to do is, you know, it's been out since they've had quality colloidal silver in nanoparticles for many years now. And, um, you know, all of a sudden DOD is coming out and telling you something. I'm telling you right now, I think uh, HIV and Ebola came from the government and also uh, Lyme disease and Legionnaire's disease, which has not been a big threat. So do what the hell you want if you want to. I mean,. It's one thing to say that it will kill every virus in certain conditions, but it doesn't get it everywhere a place in the body. The whole reason the medicines don't work in the body is because it doesn't reach every area of the body. That's the whole reason medicines don't even work in the body. It doesn't reach every area of the body. What do you think the problem is going to be in limitation on colloidal silver? Now, if you inject it in um, the blood, yeah, maybe that will be a lot better. But don't you need to be a doctor to do that? And also, if you can get, I would prefer actually using um, vitamin C injected in the blood IV. But then you got to be a doctor. You got to actually, you know, you got to see with clot of silver. You might have a worry. There is toxic. There can be toxic issues involved with it. It's not like it's that toxic, but it's it, there is toxic issues involved with it. Vitamin C, from everything I read from medical doctors, there's no toxic upper limit. But, you know, I'm just telling you what I would do for first aid. I would take the liposomal vitamin C. I'd take the best quality colloidal silver, you know, the best quality I could make. And uh, I would take um, astragalus root antiviral, um, hysop herb antiviral, coconut oil antiviral, oil of oregano antiviral, lots of selenium, lots of vitamins, uh, other herbs. I don't know. There's other herbs I have and stuff. I would take all that stuff. And hope for the best. But I'm definitely not going to call Claudel Silver the magic bullet cure-all. I personally like this technology the best. I think it has the most promise. But I am not sure how strong this would work against Ebola. But I would definitely use it. And I would use uh, a couple different settings. A couple different settings that I, I just outlined here. But that's what I would do. And uh, I'm not saying it's a cure. I'm just telling you that's what I would do. If there's no, there's nothing you could do about it, the medical system's overwhelmed, this is what I would do. So, anyway, over now, and uh, just use a little common sense on the cure all stuff that people are putting out there about colloidal silver, because if it was a clot, if it was a cure all for colloidal silver, all these other things have been gone a long time ago. It's not, it's not. I'm not saying not to use it, big difference big difference i'm not saying i'm just telling you it could be helpful it could be maybe major helpful who knows but as far as cure eh -eh. it doesn't even cure lesser stuff forget about it